Hey guys, this is Andrew from Cryptomaton. Now let's build a DCA trading bot that operates on technical analysis. This is built on previous videos where I've shared how to build a trading bot from scratch, starting with the very basics. So Python, pip, what they are, and also explaining language and syntax as we go along. So if at any point you don't understand what's going on in this video, do watch the previous videos in the playlist. They're a really good solid foundation for crypto trading in general. Before we jump into it, I have also started a second channel and lately I've been testing a Chrome extension that I created that inverts my trade. So buy equals sell and sell equals buy. If that sounds of interest to you, do subscribe below. Now let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing we want to do here is we need to take the config from the main executable file and actually drop it in its own config file so that it's all a little bit more organized and we just don't have absolutely everything into the main file. So we're just going to go ahead and create a folder here and call it config and then create a file called config.yaml. Now we're just going to replicate the config from the main configuration file. So we're going to create another file that will help us load this file into the main script. The reason it's a different file is because we need to make sure that we keep everything tidy so that we don't add too much stuff onto the main Python file. In load file now, all we need to do is we need to import YAML, which is the library that will help us read .yml files and just create a very simple function that will enable us to load this file into Python. So the code reads import YML, load the file, and then return to us the file that you have loaded. And now all we need to do in order to access this is we need to go into our main script and import this file. So now we can access the load data function from this file into this file. So we're just going to do a test here. And we want to load the config file, but as you can see, config is under config and then config YML. Now let's test this out. And sure enough, it prints our configuration file. So for example, if we wanted to access the coin key value pair within this, um, within this file, we would just do X coin, X coin. And if we print this now, we're going to see the value of that key value pair. Now we need to make sure that our script will still be able to use this, uh, these variables because of course now we need to replace the variables that we had here with the new variables part of the config file. Alright, so after moving all of the functions into their respective files, this is what we currently have in terms of our setup. We have a simple main file that only includes the main function and a config that we're loading and then we have all the other functions split into separate files so that we can streamline and scale up this application if we want to in the future. Um, we have our config file like we've described before where we have our configurable options. We have a new folder called system where we have our authentication file. This will get your Binance authentication credentials aka your API key and secret and create a simple client that will return here. We then have a Binance service file that will import our authentication file and load the credentials in a variable called client. And we will also return a buy coin function on call. And lastly, we have the load file, which is just a simple Python file that will actually help us load any YAML file that we want. And then we have our imports here, a couple of imports that we need to in order to run this code. And that's it. All we have is just a main executable file that contains everything in order for it to run. But we can streamline this even further and make it so that all of these are actually looking a little bit better so we don't have to always refer to, for example, the coin as config coin. So what we can do here is under config is just define a few variables to make this a bit easier to read in the code further down.
Okay, so for technical analysis, we're gonna be using TradingView TA. Um, I've just created a new file here called uh, TA underscore service. And I've just pasted the default technical analysis part of the code from uh, TradingView TA library. We're gonna make a few changes to this so that we adjust it to work for our DCA strategy. So we're going to just be creating a function instead of this. So we say def get TA. And we're going to add a few arguments as well. Cool, so now we're gonna test this out by just calling the function. There we go, now everything works as it should. So we can just take this and put it into our main file. So there's a couple more things we need to do now, but we are nearly there. Now, because we have the symbol, the screener, and the exchange as three new options, we need to add these into our config. With these added onto the config.yaml, now it's time to add them onto the main file. All that's left to do now is the logic. So instead of simply buying BTC USDT, we're going to only buy BTC USDT if these indicators recommend a buy. And now for the conditional logic, it's just going to be as simple as if buy in TA. And there you have it. You can now programmatically DCA at the best time by using a bit of technical analysis in your DCA strategy. Make sure to stick around and to subscribe to my channel as we will be developing this bot in future episodes. Likewise, do check out my second YouTube channel where I talk about Web3, decentralization and code other cool things that you might be interested in. Until next time, Cryptomaton out.